So guys, this was like the most popular popular request I had for different kind of videos. It was to show you the studio, to do the studio tour. And I did one like years ago, but connection at that time was so bad, I couldn't really do much. So now it's like all and better. Like these lights behind me are so distracting. Maybe I'll go this way. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's better. So, uh, good to see you all. And I hope this is not going to be a huge disappointment because I think some of you expect that uh, there's some magical stuff happening here, but it is not really. So, um, first of all, maybe I will just start where the door is because there are two doors. There's one door which is going to the house and one going outside. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that space. And look who's here. That's Mishkin. Mishkin is going to be, uh, well, he's not going to do anything fancy. He's sleepy, but you can imagine. Okay, this is Kat's bed. Okay, so here's the door. I'm standing in the door. And this is the whole space, the most I can do at in, in this shot. And... Um, as you can see, the space is quite big. This is converted garage. So when we were looking for the house to move in, we were looking for the garage or the barn. We can convert into something else because I really wanted to, oh, look at him. I really wanted to, um, separate my working space from my living space so I can close the door and forget about everything. So. This is like 70 square meters, 70 square meters. And that was completely remodeled. Uh, so we did the wooden floor, as you can see, brown wooden floor. The furniture was done by the carpenters. So this is all done, uh, you know, basically from scratch. And we kept some of the original features as well. This is the original 300 year old wall. <laughs> We had to isolate it with from the water, so it's uh, covered with a special kind of varnish, which is waterproof on both sides. So I know the studio is huge, but just to feel you a little bit better, um, in the very beginning, I had just a small 10 square meters bedroom and I couldn't fit my stuff in. So maybe I will take you for a little tour and my husband is going to help me when I need to open something, okay? So first of all, um, as you can see on the signs, there are some working tops, which I use mostly for storage. And here are the shelves that I asked them to do for me. And I use them for displaying of my props and my project and lovely gifts from my students. So starting here, yeah, this is the door and you can see this is the door. Yeah. And there's old Belfast sink. Belfast sink is something typically Irish, old style, deep sink, which I use for paint. It's absolutely ugly, but I am not ashamed because I use it for cleaning of my brushes. Oh, this is cut water supply. So I will take it away. Here are the brushes I use for the classes. Oh, and I've got my spoons and my forks as well. Here over that, I have my little solution for uh, drying my stencils after washing. So I have like a little washing line. I have a basket here, the basket for drying some of the brushes that don't fit. And then I have cat food as well because I don't want the cats to eat it. And then I've got some of the props, some of the things that I buy on the flea markets or I find in different places over on the wall, right? So I never know, maybe I will use them for something. And here on the shelves, there's a collection of different things. So here are the books I'm going to use, the projects which I made or my lovely students or friends made, some music equipment. And then for example, here is one of the many places where I have my free market stuff. So old paper and I've got old books, which are really amazing. 
Then more of the stuff that I would use for projects. You can see my latest project, the teapot, right? And yeah, this is all DVD player which we used to listen to the music from time to time. And this is something really special. I'm sure some girls from Poland know this one. This is, I'm not sure, like 40 years old sewing machine of my mom. And she, well, she, no. It is still in working condition. So uh, I sometimes use that to make some things uh, like uh, special sewing patterns on my project or to fix my stuff. Here is more of the display. I might be just book you here. I got these cards and ATCs from my lovely friends and students. So I have a lot of that. And there are more of my projects as well. All of that is just stuff I use, basically, from time to time. This display I still have from Poland. They are um, little thingies in the jars. They are some dice and marbles and crystals and everything, everything. And they've got some photos and some things that I use, you know, just for decoration for now some more projects some found uh objects such as shells and some light bulbs and clock parts and then i have huge uh, basket not a basket like um, probably like a little greenhouse and a creepy doll as well. And then a photo of the mysterious vintage lady. So that is on the top. And then on the bottom, this is the heart of all of my projects. These are the boxes of rubbish. Okay, so these are the rubbish boxes. These are all the collections I got over the years. I Surprisingly, I have them organized in a way. So... These boxes contain different things. For example, here in this one, there are chipboards of different kinds, right? Here, more shells and some broken jewelry and some other interesting elements of jewelry and rusty stuff and crystals and creepy eyes from China and these little candle holders for the Christmas trees and then more modern lights for the Christmas trees <laughs> um, and tools and everything. So all that is display. Yes, it's a little bit like museum of modern rubbish. That would be the best description. And then there are computer parts here as well. And of course, some of the Prima flowers. And then these containers with eyelets and other, you know, interesting things. Finally, uh, my box with the mold elements. I keep using these in the project. So they're here organized. I try to find a solution. So I get them organized like that. Uh, surprisingly, my cats are not really interested in playing with that that much. I don't know why. I think they're just overwhelmed with all the things they can pick from and they just decided to have their own toys. Um, just to show you, this is the cat, the cat house. And this is not like the cats don't have anything. They have toys as well. So they play. Right. And there's one of the storage solutions I really like. IKEA baskets. Okay. So these are uh, on both sides of my studio. And this is how I organize my things. These are the ones I use. Uh, if you can see, I try to group them by kind. And I'm not master of getting things organized. I will just show you what is in each drawer. Hello, guys. I just try to give it to my husband. Okay. So in this one, there's a selection of acrylic paints of different kinds. These are leftovers from my classes, most of them. And I have some silks, and I have my own acrylic paints here, and more silks. These are probably five years old at the moment. Here we've got some other stuff, for example, rusting effects of 
different kinds which I tried to use. Some, oh, very old jar of mica. So that will be shiny and rusty stuff. And finally, more of the acrylic paints. This is the, my drawer with the distress and delusion stuff. So that is all in the drawer. And I usually, when I look for something, I go inside. Here's the one with the pigments of different brands. For example, like these ones, more of the uh, mm, Ranger stuff as well. So more of the acrylics. Oops, sorry. Here are the extra waxes I use for my classes. So I'm not going to show you the beautiful parts. And then more and more of the acrylic paints of different brands. For example, Paper Artsy. Um, I have a lot of things because I am a collector of everything. Here's the drawer with the watercolors and pastels, for example, Prima pastels. These are new ones. And here in the special box, I have my new Prima uh, liquid watercolors. I want to try them finally. Uh, and watercolor pencils and brushes. Like, this is like watercolor section. And more of the watercolors this time. <laughs> These are... Um, oh my god, how do you how these are called? Ah, I forgot. Conference. Twinkling edge to O's. Yes, they're twinkling edge to O's. And more of the watercolors and pastels. And a bag. And finally, uh, powders. L uh, Luminart powders. Again, collection of the leftovers from all that time I was teaching. Finally, we go to the spray section. We've got Lindy's. Mostly Starburst, uh, Prima sprays, and the uh, Delusion sprays, and uh, Adirondack sprays as well. Then Glimmer Mists, <laughs> and I don't know what that is. Probably random sprays of my own making something I made over the time. So I try to keep it organized in a way. And you have to know that this is collection I got over 10 years. So you don't have to really think like I just uh, buy stuff like crazy. I just collected things and I rarely use the whole bottle that I have leftovers I never throw away. Okay, we go further. And this is the next part of the display over the cat house. There's another piece of the old wall. And I try to put some of the <laughs> um, projects for display. So another washing line solution. So it's easy to rearrange. And then we go that way to this corner. It is another place that I use for display. It's an old dresser. White. Oh, I'll try to show you that. The dresser with um, my projects and projects from my dear friends. So, for example, this painting I bought from Wonderful Artist. And then I have projects from my friends. Like this is by Jamie Dougherty, this one here. And this is from Agnieszka Anna, my dear friend as well. And this is from Reni Ferrova, her little wing. And then I got this uh, one. Oh, this one I got in uh, Russia from uh, Lia. And... Here are my books, and this is like a sneak peek. I have to hide that. This is new project for the class, so pretend you have, a, have never seen that. <laughs> so look here. This is there are some of the projects I was doing with you, and I have them most of them somewhere on my hand. So they are my old journals. They are oh, quite filled with the journal pages, and then. More of the art from my dear friends as well. My projects. And more of the projects. And finally, more of the books. Again, journals. Uh, in each book, there is something. I rarely fill the whole book because my stuff is two-dimensional. But these are journals. Like, this is one of my favorite ones. My family journal. I'm not sure if I can open, but... This is an old book, and I absolutely love these pages. 
it's very minimalistic when it comes to what was used to create it, but the pages are just wonderful for me because they are my family photos. <sighs> so again, this is the, oh, sorry. This is the corner and this is the collage. Uh, one of my latest ones from oh, two years ago and I don't have the space to put it on the wall, so it's here. Here's a little bit more of the uh, displays with the domes. And this is the wall you sometimes can see in the back. These are my scrapbook pages from over the years. If you want to see it closer, you have to let me know. So these are framed in Prima frames, and we just picked like the favorite ones, and we uh, put them on the wall. Like one is really crooked, but uh, it's too high. I can't really fix it now. And here in this uh, cupboard, I mostly have like extra storage for the canvases, canvases and boxes of different kinds. Yeah, canvases and boxes and, uh, well, yeah, stuff, stuff. So that is the wall behind me. Sometimes when I make Facebook Live, you can see that wall. And these are the projects I created over the years, and I really like them. The favorites of the favorites. And then if you go that way, there is my fireplace. <laughs> and because we live in Ireland, this is something which is typically Irish. Um, we use the uh, fuel, the peat, or uh, if you prefer to call it, yeah, it's just pressed peat. Uh, so we used it to go into the fireplace and give us heat if we don't use to, what if you don't want to use the oil to heat the house, we only heat the studio. So this is quite old solution, but it works really well. And, uh, did I renovate the dresser? No, this was uh, already as it is. Uh, I didn't. I just got it from the flea market. Somebody was selling that, and I bought it for not, not that much money, to be honest. So I didn't do that job. On that side, we have more of the projects. You can see the collage project mostly. Some of them you probably recognize, right? And I will go a little bit that way so you can see all the walls. Ah, I forgot I can probably do some zoom in and zoom out as well. Oh no, it's going to the side. How cool. This modern technology, it's so cool. Wow. Okay, sorry, got distracted. <laughs> so um, they are bigger projects, uh, 50 by 70 centimeters. Uh, the inviting the wind and the wanderer and then there are 20 by 20 centimeters or a little bit bigger these are my like favorite favorite ones i usually use that wall for the display and i especially like these three here so on the left there's my husband and then there is industrial ophelia and the one that i like looks like i'm in the water <laughs> And, um, of course, the portraits, the very classical uh, Finnevere style uh, portraits, they're also here. And these are some older ones, which I absolutely love. And, oh, it catches the light, yeah. This is uh, one of the first ones I made in this size. It takes a long time to build it, but it is worth it. And... This is the one I used for a long time as my logo. And I have more of these projects. I have one more in my living room. Maybe one day I will show you my living room as well because it's kind of an interesting place to be if you want to. But uh, I have to get ready. And there is more of the projects here. And this is the door outside. So this is uh, nothing interesting here, to be honest. And then we go on the other side and we have two or three more projects on that wall as well. This is the first collage, the original one I made before the 
uh, Moonlight class. And this one I made with my dear friend Lisa. And this is the one which I made not so long ago, like two years. So here we've got <laughs> um, supplies. Yeah, so these are the ones which are used for journaling, so mostly tissue papers of different kinds and stamps and so on. And here is my paper rack. And there are mostly older papers here, to be honest. The one day my friend, she came here and she sorted them by kind. And then I was always afraid to touch it. So I never did anything to them. So there are seven dot studio papers here. And then there are some different brands, for example, Basics from Basic Gray, and then Prima, and then, you know, a lot of, a lot of brands that are not longer on the market, probably. Some of the Graphic 45. And yeah, I just have them and I use them from time to time, but not too often. And this one, this one is the place where I put my things, uh, the ones I have to have on hand. And again, I will ask my husband to hold it so I can show you. So in this drawer, mostly the art ingredients and some brushes of different kinds. Right? Here, mostly art stones and acrylic paints. So metallic and sparks. And here, so mostly extra pastes. I have plenty of stuff, but remember I teach classes, so I have to have these on hand in case we run, run out of things. So I always have some extra jars nearby. So this is my storage solution. I'm not sure if it's very impressive, but that works. And this is something I want to show you. This is something I absolutely love. These are distress inks, and they are in the special racks made in the Netherlands. Then <laughs> I was teaching in this shop called the Scrap Heap, and um, they have this in stock. It's done by the owner's husband, and this is a great solution because you can put your inks there, and it's on the wall instead of on your table. So this is really cool solution. And I have rack with the inks here and printer and a trimmer. And here is my bookshelf. I have some books of different kinds. Some of them are very inspirational. And then on the other hand, oh, here, these are some of my journals and some books I was using as well, including Rekdis book or Rekdis journal, which I love. Some pretty stamps on the display <laughs> and again under I told you I have the second set of these uh, you can see some of them are newer some of them are older and all of that is again a storage solution so I have rack with the mostly stamps with then with some inks and uh, some more stamps, then mostly with keyboards, and then with some random parts. So I can show you that. I don't truly really have everything sorted because it doesn't work for me. So here's the one I have with the elements such as big stamps and inks. Whoops, that was the sound. Then I have some foam iron and some lace because you never know when you need lace. This is one of the many storages with lace. And then, oh, and this is for the cat, of course, the cat, the scratcher. <laughs> and here is this, oh, the one, the drawer with the stamps, which are mounted stamps. And on this side, we've got more of the stamps, mostly from Paper Artsy and from Michelle Ward and from Tim Holtz. And then we have my own stamps of different kinds, never used yet. They're like, again, the ones I want to keep just in case if I need to teach classes. And then more of the stamps, again, for the classes purposes or just for me. So this is, this is how I keep it all organized. 
Then some more of the inks of different kinds. I can see some of them are really not used, like uh, inks and and alcohol inks as well of different kinds and colors. These are from like whoa, eight years ago, probably. And pat either. Oh, and patina. Yeah. And then a lot of other useful supplies. You never know what you may need in your like life. Here. Keyboards. So there's like one, two, three drawers with keyboards. Some of them are not really organized, as you can see. And then more stamps this time from. This is Michelle Ward. No, this is Tim Holtz. And there's more of the Prima stamps here. Yeah, I think I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> and then. There are some adhesives here. I'm not going to take that one out because it's broken. Um, more of the things that may be useful. For example, little pieces of glass. I think it's from the, um, from the glasses and then elements from the clocks. Yeah, here you can see clock parts. <laughs> right? I keep buying things as well, as you can see. I never really unpacked it yet. And then more of the clock parts, because you never have enough of that in your life. <sighs> and then some trinkets, like random trinkets. Uh, they look like Chinese collection of different things. And more of the clock parts, because, you know, clock parts are also important. <laughs> it's funny. I want to show you something that will be more useful, to be honest. And I will switch off the light. Because looking in my drawers, it may be fun, but doesn't really make a big difference. This is the setup I made for um, making the videos if I want to show something on the white space. I rarely use it now because I changed my mind. But I use that space when I need to cut the paper. So I have two lamps over the white table. And uh, they are just simply working, and there's like extra light I can use any time. So I was using that in the early stage when I was doing my videos. And there is a switch that you can just put the light on, and you have really a lot of nice daylight here. <sighs> so that is that is helpful. I, but I didn't show you my main table yet. That's another thing. Do you want to see my main table? Well. <laughs> There is this working space, and this is something special. This is the kit I took with me to Africa. I was planning to art journal, and I didn't unpack it yet. I just took it out of the suitcase, and I think maybe I should do some kind of free journaling during the weekend, and I will be uh, unpacking that and using only just these supplies, I think. Uh, some, oh, this is my ruler, and then some of my Somerset Studio ones, and then there is more of the books and the CZX machine and all that, and more of the papers, just because you don't really <laughs> have enough of the papers. So there are some random papers here. I just love this kind of stuff that would be... Some envelopes, some keyboards, tissue papers, acrylics, oh, some bling, Ooh. and then papers from different brands. So I have some craft o'clock papers. I've got some of my own papers, vinyl records, and then here's mostly AB Studio, Seven Dot Studio, Prima, <laughs> all the papers. I try to keep all the papers I made myself. So, for example, I should have a lot of uh, Seven Dot Studio papers. And there is my basket with the MDF supplies and the basket for journaling. Again, this is hidden because the cat's trying to jump on my things. So, I have to cover that. So, they are not going to break my journaling supplies. And this wall is kind of interesting. This is the wall with the main storage. So these are uh, IKEA boxes. And 
most of these things in there are my supplies I take for the classes or I use for some projects. So all of these are organized, kind of organized. So you can see there are some with stamps which are for classes. There are some which are for the C6 dice and some of them are with alphabets and some of them are with the herbal or bot botanical elements and masking tapes. So that is really all. Um, I had to reorganize once I started teaching classes nine years ago. I, I have like a kit of the, like the selection of the products which are for classes only. For example, buttons or things which are like heat guns, right? There's a special box with heat guns here because I have like five of them with different flags depending on the uh, place I'm going to. Right? So I organized that. And then I have boxes with the handy stuff from Prima. This is like Prima storage. Right? And the <laughs> Prima storage, so <laughs> taking those Belinda, you are so funny. Yeah, so I have some of the things I usually use for gifts or if I'm running out of something. And then I have crystals here. More of the glitters and micas in here. Then I've got relics and artifacts here. And then there's my project. And behind the project, there are lace and mica powders. So they are all organized in a way. And here, as you can see, there Prima and Belize in this one. In this one, flowers, Prima, of course. Then there is uh, Fee of Herb by Prima, so they are my things. There's Michael's stuff as well. And then there are smaller ones <laughs> again. For example, old Prima stamps, Tim Holtz embellishments, and old Prima flowers, two baskets, and molds, and washi paper. Like, they, I really try to do my best to get organized. Honestly. So just to show you the wall again. Um, that is the wall with the main storage. And on the bottom, you can see there are like um, IKEA uh, boxes. And these are mostly with the furniture thing. So the furniture wax and some uh, bigger buckets of paint or varnish, whatever we used for the redecorating. Yeah, that would be that stuff. Also, baby wipes and yeah, and some resin and some waxes. <sighs> it's a lot. But remember, there are 10 years of hoarding here, so it's not really that easy to go through all that and Remember, I always have um, quite a lot of things because I love to buy and try. And also, I'm product designer, so I have a lot of stuff because I have to test it. So don't compare your stash with my stash because that would be not fair. Okay, so here is, again, the look under the tables. Here's my husband and Pepper, the diabetic beagle. Pepper. Oh, yes, who's here? Yes, who's here? Yeah. <laughs> she is absolutely lovely. She's also having a bit of problems with her eyes, but she's the cutest dog, and you can see this little tail <laughs> waggling. Okay. And then, again, this is the, the kit I will show you again later once I will be doing the journaling. And the main table. Yeah, the main table with the cat. The cat is. <laughs> I'm wondering where the other cat is now. I have no idea where she is. Uh, so Mishkin. Mishkin, the fluffy prince. Mishkin, say something. <laughs> yeah, he's not very very social kind. So the main table go, w works like this. It's like a T, right? So this is, as you can see, the place I used for some of the, clean, you know, doing some of the projects. But <laughs> not too often at the moment. And uh, then on the top, there's like the main table I use for the um, project. <laughs> Can you get locked in my studio? 
well, maybe you can. I will do it. It's like a dungeon. Look at the wall. Remember? This is like the dungeon wall. So there's no escape once you get here. And uh, now, of course, there are some laptops and computers. This is where we work during the day. And because we have to share that space with the cats, this is solution for wires. Can you see this hanging basket? Yeah. I guess you understand why. These are the chargers and they have to be out of the cat's reach. So they are far over the table so the cats are not getting too distracted. Yeah. There have to be some solutions. Then there is a section with the newspapers and molds and stencils of different kinds. <laughs> yes. So more stuff. There's a a happy section with the art of my friends on this big post. And then we go to the main table. The main table is here. And this is the cat's bed. <laughs> and this is the main table. The main table I use for most of my projects. <laughs> this is the one. This is the one you can see on other Facebook lives. So, oh, yeah, see, the dogs want to go out. There's a secret door here. Uh, so this is the stuff I use. So tons of the brushes, the station where I do the Facebook lives for you. And then uh, stuff. Yeah, <laughs> that would be the best description. So, I, there's, there's kind of method in this madness, if you are able to believe me. Because when I work here, right, this is the space, I have everything I need on hand. So, I have my paints, scissors, then I've got my pencils of different kinds, some flowers, and then on that side I've got brushes of different kinds. Right, so the silicone brushes, and then I've got some other brushes. Then I've got the most used paints here, and then uh, wax brushes, and so on and so on. Here are some little things like papers and photos I keep using. Right, and then uh, there are buckets for water and the clean brushes, and then there will be this is a basket with the some kind of the mold elements and some adhesives, more of the paint. There's blingy, shiny stuff here. There's a cut. And then <laughs> there are some sprays of different kinds. So everything is in my hands reach, right? And then there are some watercolor pencils and crayons. And on that side, <laughs> there are repurposed jars. So I just put labels on them. For example, diamond pebbles, vintage pebbles, bolts, right? Every time I teach a class, I collect the leftovers and I bring them back home and I put them in the right jars. So you can tell me I'm really the queen of rubbish. That's, that's true, but I keep using that. That's the thing. And I the buttons and then the pay tapes, and then some of the flowers. <laughs> And then some of the mechanicals. So everything is on hand, right? Oh, the sanding paper and then inking tools, old ones, all the things and glue guns. So, and again, this is not it. This is not everything. Here, <laughs> it's rack from Ikea with the waxes and acrylic paint and other useful stuff I need to have on hand. And... There's another one. <laughs> I, I think it's a little bit a lot. Okay, it's a lot. <laughs> but um, these are the art mediums I keep uh, using. So they are selections of gessos and paint and everything. And then on the other level, under the paper I have to hide from the cuts, there is... Uh, selection of the icing paste, art stones, and so on. So I don't have to go to the drawers all the times. I have them here, and then I can always replace. And this is my 
structure I use sometimes. And then I get an, a, a, another interesting thing. This is the filming solution. So, um, if you can have a look, this is a combination of a tripod, right? It's a tripod with the long arm going that way. And then here we have the, oh, this like a selfie stick where I can put directly over the project. So if you're wondering how I'm doing my video, I put on this extra lamp, this one, this one here. Then I put my phone into that stand, which was especially bought for that purpose. And finally, there is this lamp over, which is from Ikea. Yeah. And this is the light that goes on this craft space. Also, during the day, there wind, uh, sorry, the windows in the ceilings. I have a lot of daylight. I just like purity when we were doing the remodeling of the garage. <sighs> so that is the main studio, right? If you want to see something closer, you have to let me know. And I don't really have many of the storage hacks because I am not good at storage. I just keep everything in front of my eyes so I can see it when I need it. For example, well, this tin with waxes, right? Or glues. <laughs> uh, or I look for paint and it's here. So it's like trying to keep it organized and keep it, you know, more or less fun. And here's a very special basket with the lace. It's my uh, cat's favorite to sleep. Meshkin loved sleeping in that one until he got too big. He's a big boy and he doesn't fit anymore. So I have it all here. <laughs> ah, so that is the studio. And let me now just switch to the other view. Yeah, that's me in the studio. So guys, um, that was it. And I think it may be a little bit different to what you expected because I'm not really that organized as you think. Like everything is in the drawers. True. But inside of the drawers, <laughs> um, you may find everything. Like uh, I try to keep acrylic paint with acrylic paint. I try to keep the waxes with the waxes and glitter with the glitter, but it is not like uh, they are sorted by color, like I can see in some of the places. It is just not possible for me at all. Uh, and I have a lot of stuff. And for me, the most important part is behind me. Like, look there, all these boxes with the rubbish, I called it rubbish, but it's happy, happy rubbish. Uh, all of these, I have them in there opened so I can see what I've got. If I don't see it, I won't use it. So when I make a big project, just to switch you again, right? Imagine I put all these boxes on this table here so I can see what I'm doing. I would take five or six of these ones, right? In front of me when I make a big collage. And then I will be um, having them somewhere in, on hand in front of me. And I'll be gluing the supplies on the canvas and this way it's much easier <sighs> i'm not able to do better than that and these are years of practice and years of uh, different solutions i had i had to start in really small bedroom and uh, i just uh, started from there and it started to grow and then in the very end it finished to be this, but it was my big dream to have a studio like that. And it's a happy place to work. And <laughs> I think it's pretty cool, honestly. I'm proud of it, but um, I think some of you could expect something much more glamorous. <laughs> so let me know what you think. This is like the very beginning of our 
um, stay at home and make art um, uh, movement and events. And this is like the first one I am moving. Uh, I'm sorry, the first one I'm doing. And I'm planning to do more of the Instagram lives and uh, maybe YouTube streams and maybe more of the... Uh, how do you well, Facebook lives. Sorry, my brain just got fried. <laughs> and um, what, do, what would you like to see? What would you like me to do except, of course, accept the projects because I know you love the tutorials. But something else would be lovely as well. Maybe you want to have a look inside of the journals I've got there. Maybe you want to see, I don't know, my favorite selection of the tools. Or maybe you'd like to see like live session of making collage without really any purpose. Or maybe you'd like to do whatever else. I was suggesting we can do Q&A. Q&A is kind of a fun thing to do because uh, you can prepare your questions in advance and I can answer. And that would be also possible to do in Polish, especially for my Polish friends. I really encourage you, if you are doing some of the events online, try to do some of them in your native language as well, so people can feel included, because not everybody is able to speak English. So that would be really great. And um, as I was saying before, there are some questions about that space, this is just converted garage, and that, by, that that wall behind me is the original feature of my house. Um, some of you know because I was telling the story before, but maybe I should do it again in some YouTube video. Uh, this is three hundred year old, old, three hundred years old building, and it's an old dower house with uh, uh, stone out, out buildings and that wall behind me was once the back wall of the stables I think so uh, I had no heart to cover it it's absolutely beautiful and I wanted to have it visible in my studio I don't care about the spiders and I don't care about the crumbling little stones coming off <sighs> and uh, <laughs> it's just the way it is like it's not sterile st sterile sterile <laughs> at all there's dust, there are some spiders, like happy spiders in the corners. We live in the countryside, so it's all the truth. And um, it is original, that's right, Vasily. It's one of the reasons I really wanted to keep it. And then, oh, look, behind there, there's my suitcase, this one. Oh, the suitcase I use for my travels as well. Uh, I never really unpack it because, yeah, and this is my cat and my husband, of course, yeah. <laughs> I never really unpack it because uh, there's no point in doing that. So I just keep it under my storage. So <sighs> I hope that was entertaining. And um, I hope that <laughs> that makes you feel a little bit better about your spaces. Uh, if you are a hoarder, try to beat me. <laughs> That's a challenge. <laughs> try to beat me. And if you feel that you are um, having problems with organizing, surely you don't. Look at me. I, I This is a very clean version of the studio because yesterday I was reorganizing. I unpacked everything and I put it in the places. So I have my main table clean. Like I have, you can see the table here, which is great. And... <laughs> And um, I'm not going to show you what is inside of each box because that would be too long and that would be really traumatizing because there's everything. So I hope this is um, giving you enough of the inside what may be happening there. Um, when it comes to the hacks, I can give you one more. If you want to have really good light in your studio, try to buy daylight light bulbs. This is what we have here. They are daylight which means I can work no matter what time of the night and the day on the project if I need to. So all the lamps I was showing you, all these, so all these over the table, right? And all over that part, they're all daylight. So daylight uh, is uh, important for me because I want to see the true colors 
and I want to have the good view. And uh, the truth is, I am quite short sighted, so I have to make sure I'm using my eyes in a moderate way. Mishkin, yes. So Mishkin is a bit shy guy. He is, but you know, oh, see, he is. Oh yeah, give me scratches. Like, oh. Let's record the pouring. Can you hear? <laughs> no, I have two cats, but my other cat, she is somewhere. We don't know exactly where she is. Maybe my husband can find her for you. And uh, yes, this is Siberian cat in the winter coat. So he is super fluffy and is getting some dreadlocks already because it's the time to change the coat. And it takes some time. He's going to find Yaga. Yaga is younger. She's red female. And yeah, it's fluff ball. I know. And there's, oh, there's also this cat door. So the cats can go out whenever they want. And the dogs also. My older dog, she is a little bit too big, but she still tries to squeeze through it. So I was telling about the, dead, uh, the daylight light bulbs. This is what we have here. And that really helps a lot. You can see it's quite light and it's 9 p.m. So, yeah, it is uh, the best solution we have so far. And if you want to take photos because you're really desperate during the night because you really need them for the next day, you can use that setup. And, you know, I, I had these lamps before. I just took them from the previous studio and some of these, you can see there, each of them is different. And this is part of the style. We're absolutely accepted. And we think it's kind of cute. So there's my computer as well. The cut beds. <laughs> and, oh, I think, I think the other cat is coming. So if you're cat lovers, this is the moment for you. Oh, look at her. This is, <laughs> this is a uh, Yaga. A little girl. Yeah, she is less shy. She's less <laughs> shy, yeah. Absolutely lovely little kitten. Like, she's not so little anymore, but uh, she's much more social. Yaga? Yes, good girl. Yes. So here we are. <laughs> Here we are, just to say goodbye and thank you so much for joining me for the tour. Remember, my other team members and my friends are going to entertain you in the next days and they are going to uh, keep you updated and they're going to post what they're going to do. I know some of the girls want to show you some storage hacks and they want you to see some of the tutorials. You know, this is not the best time to be outside with the people. So we will keep you company. And um, thank you so much for watching. Please share that video with your crafty friends if they want to see the studio. Here it is. And let me know in the comments um, if you have any questions. <laughs> if you have any questions, if you want to uh, ask about something, if you want to see some other places, let, us, let me know. And if you want to see a special kind of video, also let no. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Have a great night or day or afternoon and see you soon.